up, let's bring in our next guest. Joining us now, John Turnipseed, the author of Bloodline. You spend enough time in hell, you get the feeling you belong. John, we are so pleased to have you join us today here on America's Forum. Thank you for joining us there from Newsmax, Washington. Well, thank you for having me. John, your take on this personally, can you give us some background on what brought you to write the book and why you join us here today to talk about the protests? Well, what the book was written because I wanted, there's a lot of kids out there and adults that have went through things that they find it hard to talk to somebody about, hard to relate to um, their, you know, their life and what they went through. I went through hell, basically, and I wanted to help as many people as I possibly could by just talking about my story. It's not the most flattering thing uh, in the world, you know, because it's very painful to me, but I knew that it would help some people, and that's why I wrote it. And part of that story includes uh, a situation, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, where your son was shot, is that correct? Yes, my son was shot um, numerous times. So all 17 of 17 times to be exact. All of us care for our kids. What, what happened in the wake of his shooting? What, what changed for you? In the wake of his shooting, I'd already lost one child by, by being absent in his life. Uh, I was away in prison and another man who didn't even know my son, a three-year-old son, beat my son to death. And then t 12 years later, I'm in a similar situation where a group of assassins, I call them assassins, some gang bangers, um, ambushed my son and shot him. And he was on his deathbed. And um, it just brought my whole life in front of me. And um, I just basically just threw myself to the mercy of God and said if he lived, that I would change my life. And that's what happened. John, in light of your very moving story, um, looking at these protesters, why do, you, why do you personally think that some people have resorted to such violence? Um, you're asking about the protesters in New York that uh, we just uh, yes. heard talking about killing police officers and yes. things like that. And that I'm not with that. I, I think that's a, the most awful approach that could happen. You know, it's like if I hate a racist, why would I be racist? If I hate the killing, why would I kill? You know, it's exactly wrong. Wrong is wrong. You know, it's like um, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to result to the level of killing somebody because I feel that there's been an injustice. So I think that's totally wrong. And what we see collectively across the nation is um, a, a variation. Some would say it's a heightening of, of racial tensions, and yet. You're telling us a story of your own family, your own son, your own experience. Is, is returning to your experience for a second, as your son survived that attack, as I understand it, and you resolved to change your ways, is that akin, would you say, to a road to Damascus experience like Saul of Tarsus went through to become Paul? Did you dramatically change your way of life in the wake of what happened to your son? No, absolutely. When I changed, it happened immediately. You know, a lot of people think there's a, uh, you know, it takes a, a long time for a person to change their life. No, when you change your life, when you dedicate your life to being something different, it happens immediately. And then you just start making the adjustments that you need to do in your life. And from that time that I changed my life, I, I was a drug addict before that. I haven't touched any drugs. I was a criminal before that, used to commit numerous crimes. Every single day, I haven't committed one crime, and I've tried to be the best person I possibly can be. You know, change happens immediately. Um, John, speaking of change, what do you think needs to be done by community and state leaders to change things, to restore peace? To restore peace, there has to be a change in the culture of, of America itself. You know, one of the things that um, we've worked real hard, and I say we as Americans, we've worked real hard to take uh, Jesus out of the life of, of people by taking prayer out of churches and things of that nature. I believe that was wrong. In my community, one of the things we desperately need 
is the grace of, of, of God. That's what we need, and we need a belief system that relies upon that. And also, we have to get back to being family. Yeah, when Martin Luther King was marching, what was his biggest influence was the families that were marching behind him. Right now, the breakdown of the family has cost America a tremendous um, force of change. So the culture of America has to change. We have to be back, get back to being family with all of us. A minute 30 remains in our time together, John. If you could offer advice to Al Sharpton, to President Obama, uh, for healing this racial rift publicly, what would that advice be? My advice would be to, to, to lead. And to lead means that somebody has to be the biggest person in the room. Somebody has to take on the weight and not just throw the big ugly finger of blame on everything, but to come up with solutions. You know, lead by offering solutions to the problems that we're facing today. And, and a lot of it requires to putting some of your own personal feelings aside and think about what's best for the nation right now and and leading going ahead moving forward and not being a racial nation is is what's best for the nation right now john turnipseed you have had an experience that well you call going through hell but now on this side of it your experience is both poignant and practical in terms of where we're heading as a nation I want to thank you very much for your time today. I hope you'll come back and visit us again. In the meantime, I want to remind everyone, John Turnipseed's book is entitled Bloodline. You spend enough time in hell, you get the feeling you belong. Of course, the great news is John Turnipseed turned his life around for reasons he just mentioned. And America's Forum will continue following this Newsmax Now update.